Hello, everyone. Welcome to More to the Picture That Meets the Eye, Behind the Lens with legendary sports photographer Steve Babineau. I'm John Horrigan, and welcome to this episode. In this episode, we're going to talk about the WHA, and then we're going to look at some of Bab's early photos from the National Hockey League, namely with the Boston Bruins. Babs, how are you, buddy? Okay, man. How are you? Good, thank you. Thanks. Yeah, good seeing you. Thanks so much. You've been telling some great stories. Um, as I put a, open a pop here, some great stories about the photos, and we can go hours and hours. But I wanted to to start with this particular photo, um, the helmet, the guy. Just go with it. Tell me about this guy. Yeah, this is Teddy Teddy Green, uh, former Boston Bruin that I had gone and seen play when I was a, a kid playing for the Bruins. Big tough guy. He was really really tough guy. Terrible Teddy. Uh, uh, yeah, terrible Teddy. And then he had that. Uh, critical accident in that high stick incident where you know i think it was fractured skull and wayne mackey uh, yeah wayne mackey high stick in an exhibition game if i remember correctly and it was kind of devastating to you know to be a fan of the bruins and hear about that uh, I, re I remember one of my earliest memories is that and that he had a metal plate in his head and yep. people forget babs teddy was he'd spear you he'd cut you and he was swinging the stick too he was the one who swung the first stick yeah, I mean, he was he was a tough guy, and you know, he didn't take any baloney from anybody. And uh, you know, unfortunately, he you know, Mackey hit him in the, in the right spot, I guess, and and it, it messed him up. And uh, he came back with the Bruins for a while there, and then this opportunity with the WHA, uh, with the league that Bobby Hull had jumped to. Uh, and, you know, he clicked on with the Whalers, knowing that he, here he is playing in the Boston Garden as a New England Whaler, and this is where he played his, his career with the Boston Bruins. So it wow. made a good connection for the franchise to have Teddy Green on the team. And, uh, and he played here for a while, and then eventually he ended up going uh, to Winnipeg. Yeah, um, and he played well. He played well with the Whalers. Yeah, he played well. He played well. He came back. He had to wear the, this lid, and I think he changed this type of lid a helmet later on to a, a full covering on the top uh, when he played for, with Winnipeg because I remember seeing some photos of him with a different helmet on. Mm. And he has his number but, six here, and he's captain of the yeah, team. Yeah, captain of the team. Uh, and, uh, you know, again, he was a Bruins legend and a you know, fan favorite with Boston, and I think, you know, that's why he probably signed with – made sense to go to the Whalers. And, uh, you know, wow. though obviously they won the trophy – that first year when he was there, you know, the Avco the cup, the Avco you know? cup. So, but I mean, this is the garden. Again, you can see those red cushion seats that yep. were down low. And this would be me shooting from a whole position. Just want to go back to the uh, whaler. Look at the uh, whaler's old logo, Babs there. Okay. Yep. With, uh, in the, yep. the, the, the W there and the writing around it. Okay. Now let's go back to what terrible Teddy's wearing here, right here. So it's the a harpoon. Yeah. So that's going to be, uh, it's going to be probably 74, 75, uh, when I think they were shuttling between the garden and the arena, you know, they were playing some games in the garden, some games in the arena. Uh, and then after the, they played a year, I'm pretty sure, I'm pretty sure they played a whole year in the Boston arena and then eventually, uh, went to Hartford slash Springfield. And he's, he's got a Sherwood stick, no tape, and he's got number six, which you wore on the Bruins. Number six, yeah. Wow, that's great. Terrible Teddy team, Green. Timmy Sheehy, Timmy Sheehy, Brad Selwood, Ricky Lee, Don Blackburn, I can remember. Swoop uh, Wayne Gordon, Carlton. Yep, Jim Al Dory. Smith was a yep. goaltender. Bruce Landon was a goaltender. Yep, he has them. a book out. And Terry uh, Caffrey. Terry Caffrey. Kevin O'Hearn. Danny Bolduck. Uh, Davey Hines eventually played for them a little bit, right, probably around this era that, that this jersey came into play. And uh, Teddy went on to be a – no, I couldn't say successful coach, but he went on to be a coach, and he was a leader yeah. in the locker room. So that's yeah. great. Terrible Ted Green. Now what about these? These are all Houston Arrows photographs. We could see uh, Mark Howe, Marty Howe, Terry Roskowski, Don Larway, Paul Popiel. Uh, Johnny McKenzie for the Whalers, Mike Rogers with the Whalers, another score, Mike Antonovich and Tommy Webster. So work, yeah, this work this page. Uh, 
This is, this is from the WHA set that was put out by Tops when they started to change and go from post. And these are all your photos, Babs, so we're clear. All these are all your photos. photos. All yep, keep going. And you can see that the, uh, the uh, how one, the Mark how one is taken in the garden. A left the, wing, not a defenseman, one. too. He's yeah, left. the Marty how one looks like it might be taken in Hartford. And uh, Terry Ruskowski and uh, Laraway and Popeil look like Springfield. Uh, but you know, that's when, uh, they, they drifted away from the, the training camp pose photos of the locker room shots. And I had already contributed to the top 76 NHL set. So, you know, I think this, this is in that time frame of 76, 77, 78, 70, you know, this is probably 77, 78. Okay. And then, uh, eventually they did one more set when, uh, Wayne Gretzky's card mm -hmm. came out. It's amazing, Mark Howe, as a left wing, people don't realize he did play forward in WHA. And his brother, yeah, Marty. Mark Howe's card there, it actually says in the fine print, it says, now with the New England Whalers. Huh. So they didn't have a photo. Same thing on Marty. It says the same thing. So they oh, chose to use wow. the Houston Arrows photo, but then they went to the Whalers. So that's the first – this came out probably the first year when they came, became to – to the Whalers. And I believe it's 77, 78. And then Ruskowski went on to play with the Pittsburgh Penguins. Tough guy. He played yep. with Edmonton. Don Laraway, uh, just a WHA guy, but he could score. Paul Popio, another guy who just mainly played in WHA. Tough guy, defenseman, assistant captain. And then we have Pi, Johnny McKenzie. Talk about him and talk about that photo. Yeah, Pi. Well, Pi, you know, Pi came in with the Philadelphia Blazers in the WHA. And right. uh, then he ended up going to Vancouver when the yep. team moved that second year. And he played with the Minnesota Fighting Saints. Yeah, he went to the Minnesota Fighting Saints after that. He played with uh, Mike Walton with the Minnesota Fighting Saints uh, with that team. And then all of a sudden, bingo, he shows back up. He shows back up with uh, the New England Whalers, which obviously is, you know, only an hour and a half away from Boston. And, you know, he's an ex-Boston Bruin. So, right. I mean, uh, uh, you know, and then I think he came, he came in that first year with the Whalers when they merged. They came into the NHL. I think he was on that roster that first year. I don't know yeah. If he played, if he played and, year, and I know that he was on the Minnesota Fighting Saints, and they folded after 59 games. Right. <laughs> Excuse me. So, uh, you know, but Johnny Pye, you know, again, growing up, going to games and seeing Johnny Pye play for the Bruins and, and then being able to photograph him as well. And uh, – Pretty, pretty cool. Pretty cool. Uh, Pike played tough. He could score. He's a little guy. But um, he, I remember the uh, final stats. In, in, he was age 41 where he had over 100 penalty minutes, and I think he had over 20 <laughs> goals. And To me, he was, he was a uh, penultimate Bruin in terms of the yep. way he played. Big, bad Bruins. And then there's a guy, Mike Rogers, lower left-hand corner, big-time scorer in the WHA, uh, came back into the uh, in NHL with – uh, the New England Whalers, and he was a, a stalwart centerman. Yep. He was, a, he was a, you know, I don't want to say he was a first-line centerman, but he was definitely second or third-line centerman because the Whalers, I think, you know, had uh, other guys that were uh, – Wayne Carlton was obviously with them, too, at that same time frame. So I think Larry Plo. Him, yeah, Larry Plo and Wayne Carlton. So, you know, for me, he would have been like the third-line center, but uh, he definitely could play. And uh, – you know, it wasn't as big as, say, Carlton or Plo, but, uh, you know, very similar, uh, you know, clutch uh, face-off man, passer, and, uh, you know, he made a name for himself as well. Yeah, and Mike Antonovich also came over when the uh, Minnesota folded in WHA yep. with Pia McKenzie, yep. and he, he contributed to the Whalers. And then Tommy Webster, their first 50-goal scorer, 50 goals his first season with the Whalers, 72-73, former Bruins property. Yep. Went to play in Detroit, if I'm correct in saying that. He played in Detroit for a while. Yep. And uh, remember seeing him and photographing him in the NHL as well. As, and then – I believe I actually have some photos of him maybe with the Boston Braves. You know, he, I think he might have played on the Boston Braves. I, he might wow. Have. Wow. So, and I think – and uh, I want to go move to this one here. You're talking about the Boston Braves. So let's let's talk – this guy, first of all, who's this wearing number five? Number five is Taz O'Reilly, Terry O'Reilly. And uh, unbelievable. You know, I mean uh, – I got to know Terry very well later on and we're good friends and he has dash hounds and I have dash hound dotsies. 
But uh, to see him play for the Boston Braves with, you know, not the talent that he ended up later on in life with the Bruins, but was he a workhorse, man? Was he a workhorse? Was he a, a protector? Uh, wasn't afraid of anybody and, you know, would get knocked down, bounce right back up, get back in the play, get bounced down again, get back in the play, make it happen. And if, if there's any true Boston Bruin representative on strength, get go, whatever you want to call it. Hustle, heart, soul. <laughs> heart, soul, it's Terry O'Reilly. And that's why his number – is hanging from the rafters. You know what I mean? Yep. And, uh, but he was a protector. I remember going to those games. So that's literally my location that I had for my tickets where I was able to shoot through that window with no glass, nothing in the way. And, uh, you know, I remember seeing him battling Larry Robinson playing for the Nova Scotia Voyagers, chasing Dave Schultz around one night when Schultz was playing for the Philadelphia team. And, uh, but that picture is interesting because you can see over to the left, that's Dave Forbes. Uh, it's coming, two. turning the blue right. line and coming towards Terry on the left. Yep. Wow. Number 20, Matt Ravlich. <clears throat> wow. Number three is Rick Jones. Really? Big guy. Number 10 is Ron. Ron Bohe. Beam. Oh, yeah. Ron Beam. Yep. Then over him to his right. Number two. You have number 18, Richie LeDuc. Oh, yeah. You have number nine, I think it is. That's Doug Roberts in the back. And number 12 is Tommy Williams. There are a couple of and Tommy it, Williams that played in the league, but wow, yeah. That's Tommy Williams, the American Minnesota born. Wow. Ended up going, but, and I can't see who this guy is right in the front here. Tommy Williams was an Olympian, I believe. That. Yep. This is our defenseman here in the front, number two. Uh, I can't remember who that is right now, but sure. that, you know, that's uh, basically, they had a great team. I mean, they had Dan Bouchard in goal, you know, they had Dan Bouchard in goal, went on to play for Atlanta, right? Went in Quebec, yeah. Yep. And uh, you know, Matt Ravlich, didn't he play for Chicago? Davey Forbes played for the Bruins. Forbes is good. Forbes, Forbes is a tough guy. He unfortunately um, took the eye out of Henri Boucher. Um, Rablitz didn't really do much in the NHL, nor did Rick Jones. But Ron Beam, look at how short he is with that weirdo Ron helmet. Beam. Richie LeDuc went from the Braves to the uh, – WHA. The went to the WHA. He played for three teams, I think, in the WHA. Cleveland, Cincinnati, and I think there was one other team. Quebec. He played for Quebec, yep. too. Yep. And, and Dougie Roberts. I always liked Dougie Roberts for some unknown reason – uh, I like Dougie Roberts. He was a big guy and a uh, defenseman. He could play forward, too. And, you know, for him, I think he came from uh, Detroit to Detroit. us, the yep. Bruins, and then was with the Braves, but then every once in a while would get called up to the Bruins. And then eventually his brother, Gordy Roberts, you know, came into the uh, WHA with the Whalers. Oh, that's right, yeah. And then he played uh, with uh, – couple of teams in the NHL, including the Boston Bruins. Yeah, long career for Gordy Roberts, yeah. yeah Whalers, remember, Whalers were great all the way through the WHA. Yeah, yeah. But I remember going to games as a kid and seeing Tommy Williams play for us. You know, Tommy yep. Williams, was number 11, playing for the Bruins. You know, he was like one of the first American-born players, if not the first American-born player to play in the, in the NHL. Uh, and he had been sent down, four. right? Didn't he have like a, a, a trough in his career? Is that why he's yeah, – he had, he had drop, and then he ended up going, I think, Minnesota. He went to Minnesota, yeah. back to his – that's where he came from. And he, did he go to the Whalers then? Didn't he go to the WHA? Yeah, he, went to the he ended up going to the WHA and the Whalers, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so uh, – but, uh, you know, American-born player playing in the NHL, and I got to see him back in the day when I was going to games as a, as a kid. It was pretty cool, so – uh, I um I went to two Boston Braves games. One was against the Richmond Robins, and the other, I believe, was against the Baltimore Skipjacks or the Baltimore Clippers. But I do remember the the Richmond Robins game and tons of fights. Yeah. I remember seeing the <coughs> watch after the Americans, and Don Cherry was the coach for the Ron. Ah. You know, I got a photo of Don Cherry from my seats uh, behind the bench against. Uh, the Boston Braves coaching you know, that team. So 
Um, Amazing. And eventually seeing Cherry come to the Bruins, be the coach. And then, you know, Don was really a real, real positive factor in my career uh, becoming the Bruins photographer. And, and I'm, I'm, well, I didn't know that. Yeah. He, uh, he uh, brought in, uh, if you remember the old Boards and Blades Club in the garden for yep. the season ticket holders, which was downstairs. Well, they were building a new private, they were building a new press room upstairs underneath the balcony. And Nate Greenberg, the PR guy, but I was not officially with the Bruins at the time. I was working for the, uh, the Hockey Digest, Hockey Pictorial, the Hockey News, getting access. So I was really shooting the visiting teams coming in as well as shooting the Bruins. But, uh, you know, I was shooting the game. And they were building this new press room. And I, I just got chatting with Nate one day. And I said, Nate, what about maybe making one wall on this new press room with some visiting team photos, visiting team players? And he thought it was a good idea. And uh, he said, why don't you put some stuff together? And I did. And, and I was working my regular job and I got a phone call and it was Nate calling me up, asking me if I could come into a meeting on a Friday afternoon at like 2.30 to make a presentation. And, and I brought in w, NHL star players and uh, he said, bring in some Bruins too. So I remember sitting in a room, Paul Mooney's office, president of the garden with Harry Sinden, Tom Johnson, and Nate Greenberg. <laughs> and I Bruins photographer, you know, and, and I'm present and I put the rotary tray in of NHL stars. And after maybe 10 or 12 images got projected of NHL stars, Harry, Harry Sinden looked over at me like really with a stern face, like saying, don't you have any Boston Bruins pictures? And I go, Oh yeah. Yeah. And I started putting the Bruins tray in. And all I remember is they were just picking John Wensinks, Dan Jonathan, John, Terry O'Reilly, you know, Luke DeFore, you know, they were just picking pictures like crazy. And, and, I, and I didn't get it because the room was not big enough to, to put up that many 16 by 20 prints that uh, wow. were, were there. And when I left the meeting, I said to Nate, I said, well, what about the visiting team players? And Nate kind of just looked at me and he said, pick five or six guys you like, you know? So I picked five or six guys and I made up, I think it was Lenny McDonald and Guy Lafleur and, and, you know, Keith Magnuson and stuff like that. And I remember going to that first game that next year and walking into that press room and not seeing any of my Bruins pictures on the wall, but seeing the five or six NHL players. And then I didn't, I couldn't figure out where my pictures were. And then when I went outside, this bull gang guy came up to me and said, Hey, Steve, I was just down that new boards and blades club that they built Ooh. for the season ticket holders. And your pictures are all over the wall. Wow. I didn't. I didn't even know about that. Wow! And I went up to Nate. I went up to Nate and uh, saw him just maybe ten minutes later. And I said, Nate, you never told me about that that boards and blades club. And he goes, Yeah, don't the pictures look great down there? And I go, Man, I'm blown away. It's like unbelievable. And then he stuck out his hand and he shook my hand and he says, You're the Bruins color photographer until I tell you different. Wow! And I was just like, Okay. And that's how it kind of started, you know. That's so and, cool. And, you know, it's just unbelievable. So let's get into the Bruins. Who are these guys? We talked about one of them earlier, and then you had the other guy's jersey. You have Johnny Pye there in the yellow and Derek Turk Sanderson in the orange, and that's at the Harvard, Harvard Stadium area where they're coming out of the um, – the, uh, the equipment room where the football players used to get dressed because Watson Rink was so cold to put on your full hockey gear uniform. The players used to get dressed across the yard and then wow. walk over to the rink and put their skates on. So this would be me. This would be me probably cutting class back in the day, you know, because this is before Turk, Dirk, Turk is playing for us here. Sanderson is playing for us. And then he went to the WHA. Oh, so this is before the WHA. So this is prior to 72, 73. Correct. So this is me probably sneaking out of class at Ringe Tech for three classes and running through the Harvard yard and going down and trying to catch 20, 25 minutes of Bruins practice, but seeing these guys walk across the, the concourse to get to the arena and this is this is actually taken with an instamatic camera and wow. then I go into the arena the, the watson rink was known as watson rink in those days 
and then watch the teams practice with a Shaq playing for the Bruins, wow. and Tom Johnson, the coach, and Bobby and Phil and Kenny Hodge and, and those guys. And so this was my, I guess, initial interest with a camera in photographing the Bruins, never thinking that it would get to the eventual level that it did get to years down the road. That's amazing. So I, I, I guess that this is 72. This could be 72, 72. Or 71. Or, or okay, because, well, no, actually it had to be 71, 72 season. 71, 72. Yeah, this is me. The going cup year. In, buying seats in the obstructed view, but this is Turk before he left town. Wow. Wow. Yeah. What's this now? Yeah. Where are you? This is, this is up in the last row of the balcony behind the goal, which they classified as an obstructed view seat. And this was probably a good seat to get because you could stand on your seat. Me being at that time, six foot three, six foot four. If I stood up, even on the floor, I still wasn't totally obstructed by fans unless somebody put their hands in the air. But again, now this is me with a 35 millimeter just an SLR camera. One St. Louis or Buffalo? Uh, this is actually LA? LA. LA Kings. That's the LA Kings. I think that's – could that be Don Edwards in goal for the LA it, Kings? It's an Edwards. I want to say Roy Edwards. No, Marv Edwards, Roy Edwards. Yeah, it, I think it may be It's Roy. an Edwards. Yeah, yeah. That, yep. Wow. That Espo with the puck coming to the blue line. I believe that's Harry Howell, number three there, playing for LA. Uh, you got Haji on the Haji's on the wing there. Yep, scooting down uh, the boards. Yeah, and that looks like Dallas Smith yep. skating over the Bruins B. And uh, number five, I don't recall who that is. But uh, again, you have the old style unis. Sheldon Kenegaiser. <laughs> yeah, I wanted. To you say have that. the old style unis there yep. in the old garden, and that would have been my view from the game, for the game with that primitive. SLR camera, but I still took pictures. So, you know, you look back at these now and you're in the old barn, you're in the old garden, you know, the way it was. And, and this is a, you know, to me, this is a memorable picture to have, you know, and, sure. Uh, sure. Yeah, it's, it's pretty cool. You know, Gar gardens banged out there. You can see it there And the old LA Kings. Why did they have to change purple and gold? It was awesome. All right. What do we got here? This is actually, I, I, you know, I kind of went back in my mind. Number one, it's Old Garden. Number two, Tony Esposito is not in goal. And, and I tracked it back in my mind, and this is an exhibition game that the Bruins played against the Chicago Blackhawks at the Garden. And it wasn't sold out because it was an exhibition game. Mike Visor? And I don't know who it would be. And I moved around. For some, for some reason, I have Mike Visor in my mind. Yep, Mike Visor. Okay. Yep, yep. I'm not really 100% sure of that. And Bobby but, and looks. Think, Bobby looks like he's about to score the flying goal there, doesn't it? I think maybe Bobby might have actually shot the puck, and it, that, that's it going in the net right there. <laughs> but that's Kenny Hodge, Bobby, or Wayne Cashman, yep, Stan Cash. Makita yep. with the helmet, yep. Doug Jarrett. That's Doug Jarrett. Cliff Coral, I think, is the one with the bushy hair that's trying to push Cashman out of the way. Wow. That's awesome. And, but again, you've got old-style garden with the cushion seat. You can see a hole in the glass there that I was probably – thinking about going over to get at, but I didn't know if that actually was going to let me sit there. So I, wow. I found a seat in the grandstand underneath the balcony. And again, it was, you know, you want to zoom in, you want to zoom in on Bobby Orr or do you want to get the effect? And now I look back at this picture and the fact that I have Hall of Famer Stan McKeeter, Hall of Famer Bobby Orr in this picture, you know, the grit and the grind of Cashman. Yep. And uh, Dougie, I've got two Chicago good defensemen. I just don't have Tony yep. Esposito. <laughs> And you got a guy who played for both teams, Kenny Hodge. Yes, yes. yes. And this guy yeah, played so for Chicago. That would be me during warm-up coming down to the glass, shooting over the top of the glass, and, you know, getting a candid picture of, uh, of Phil yep. Yep. during warm-up. Wow. You know, and, uh, what a goal and, scorer. What a goal well, scorer. Unbelievable. unbelievable. You know, just unbelievable. Unbelievable player. This would be my first Hockey News NHL cover. I had had photos in the paper with the WHA prior to this, but this is October, looks like 18, 1974. Wow. Yep, 74, 75 season. Andre Savard and then Jimmy Andre Roberts Savard. with his big pointed ears. 
Jimmy Roberts. And uh, it's kind of strange because Andre Savard is now a scout with the New Jersey Devils. And when I was down in Florida years ago uh, shooting games for Upper Deck, Andre was there. And I went up to Andre and I told him who I was. And I told him, I made you famous by putting you on the hockey news cover. He goes, what? He said, you took that photo of me wow. on the hockey news He goes, my mother, I think, bought 30 copies of that. <laughs> <That's> a, <laughs> and we've become uh, friends ever since. And I just, I just found two or three photos of him the other night. And he had given me his email address, and I, I emailed him to him. And he immediately, like five minutes after getting the pictures, immediately responded. And he says, I hope I see you in Florida when we get back playing. Oh, that's so, awesome. Again, I, that's you know, awesome. he didn't know me back in that time frame because here I was in there in 74 and I'm not technically working for the Bruins. I'm an independent photographer, you know, and then by the time I became affiliated with the Bruins, he had moved on. He had moved on to, uh, you know, Montreal, uh, wherever. In, in the, uh, behind him, I see 24. You got 24, and that is probably Taz. That's probably Terry. And, and that might, that's not his rookie year because I believe his rookie year, he came up with, with the old-style uniforms with the bar on the top. That would have been his rookie year, 70, with the 76 patch. Yeah, yeah. this is 74-75. Uh, yeah. In yeah, the yeah, uh, right. Cleveland Crusaders showing tough new look and Russians rip off Team Canada. So that's the series you were, were referring to a few episodes ago when the WHA All-Stars took on uh, Russians. Yes. And yes. I don't know that was pretty to. spectacular to be. I was in Quebec City for that. And I, I'm not, I don't think it might. Was, I think they started this series out west and then they came east. But they, that was where they were going to play yeah. uh, those All games. Right. All right, and uh, you know, but I mean that roster with such great players of Hal, Paul Mahavlich, Henderson, LaCroix, Ralph Backstrom, Andre Lacroix, Ralph Backstrom, uh, Tardif, pretty pretty spectacular. To oh, see. absolutely, and, and the and the Russians, you know, with Karvatalnov. You know, Yakushev. Well, Karl, Karlamov, right, or Kamerlov. I always get that mixed up. But he died in the uh, car accident just oh, before the uh, 80 Olympics. Uh, Tretiak, uh, Tikhanov, who was our hard hat. Uh, yep. And then Fedezov, who was the, arguably one of the greatest defensemen ever, top three. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I had shot the, the Russian team a couple of times then. And uh, they played a, against the uh, – NHL stars at Madison Square Garden once, and I, I, I shot them there too. So, you know, I kind of identified with who the Russian stars were. And, sure. You know, I'm going to eventually do something with, with those pictures uh, in some chapter. <laughs> oh, yeah, absolutely. Oh, people would love to see that. I mean, hockey saved the world from nuclear destruction in 72 as the height of the Cold War. <laughs> And just uh, the way, uh, you know, they came over and kicked our butt and then Team Canada went over there and just like stunned them. I mean, stunned yeah. them. And we played a, a brutal brand of hockey. But anyways, uh, hey, Babs, thank you so much for, on this episode for joining me on uh, nearly 50 years of legendary sports photography, not only in New England, but across the National Hockey League, Major League Baseball, uh, NBA concerts, Westerns, and the like. Uh, feel like doing, we'll come back and do some more episodes of more to the picture than meets the eye. But Steve Babineau, Babineau, who I call the Ansel Adams of New England sports photography. Thank you so much, Babs, for, for coming out and talking uh, about some of these great snaps. Thanks, John. Okay, great. Thanks, Babs. We'll see you next episode. Okay. Take care.